Ladies, gentlemen, brethren, companions, good evening. Welcome to Solomon Live. My name is Brody, the Provincial Communications Officer for Worcestershire and also the host of our monthly webinars. And um, I forgot to mention, actually, I only thought about this a few days ago, well, a few weeks ago, but it's our third birthday. We've been going three months. Happy birthday to us. Feel free to uh, email your presents over a little bit later on. But no, uh, three years and going strong. Thank you if you've been with us all the way through. So tonight, discover more in the Royal Arch. We discuss Archway and how chapters are starting to use it. Very informative Freemason conversation tonight. And if you've got any questions for our guests, you can submit them via the question and answer facility on Zoom. We'll begin in three minutes time. Ladies, gentlemen, brethren, companions, good evening. Welcome to Solomon Live. I'm Brody, uh, your host this evening. Tonight's discussion will be Discover More in the Royal Arch. And in typical fashion, we're just allowing you in, get yourself settled, get maybe grab a drink, make yourself comfortable. We'll open the doors properly at 7.30. So uh, make sure you get yourself ready. And uh, we'll begin in just a couple of minutes' time. Ladies, gentlemen, brethren, companions, welcome to this evening's Solomon Live. We'll begin in just a moment from now, but thank you for joining us nice and early. Ladies, gentlemen, brethren, companions, good evening and welcome to Solomon Live. We are live across the world. We are live across the UK. My name is Brody. I have the honour of being the host of these monthly webinars of engaging Freemasonry conversation. And you can chip in with our show tonight, too. If you've got any questions that you would like to have uh, me put to our illustrious guest this evening, you can do so via the question and answer facility on Zoom. So... Our discussion this evening, discover more in the Royal Arch. So let's welcome our very special guest this evening. Evening, companions. Good evening. evening. Good to see you. Looking very good, all of you. Very good indeed. And uh, it is our third anniversary as well. So a very special Solomon Life for that reason alone. So what I thought we could do in typical fashion, let's go around the screen. And I thought you could briefly introduce yourselves before we get into the uh, the conversation. So, Mike, you first of all. Okay, well, my name is Mike Ricks. I'm a member of the uh, Membership and Communications Working Party. I chair the Archway Group, uh, which is a subset of uh, MCWP. I lead the Archway Support and Development Team now. And I've been a Royal Archmason for 20 years. And I'm at the moment, I am Deputy Grand Superintendent in Lincolnshire. 
Excellent. So good to have you here, sir. And uh, and Paul, perhaps you could do the same. Introduce yourself to those who are watching us this evening. Yep. Hi, I, I'm Paul Renton. Um, I've been in the Royal Arts twice as long as Rixie. Uh, <laughs> I've been in, in, in for 40 years. Uh, I chair the Membership and Communications Working Party in the Royal Arch. As Michael said, the Archway Group is a subset of that. Uh, how did I get into it? Well, shortly after I'd been raised as a Master Mason, my proposer, my father-in-law, thrust a red form into my hand and said, you're joining this next. And that oh, was simple, simple as that, was it? Yeah, simple yeah. A, a familiar story, a familiar story. And Elliot, perhaps you could introduce yourself tonight as well. Absolutely. Hi, Brody. Hi, everyone. And I'm Elliot. I'm part of the Membership and Communications Working Party with a particular focus on Royal Arch Communications for Supreme Grand Chapter. I'm the Deputy Grand Superintendent in Essex. I'm the baby of the group, it seems, having been a proud member of the Royal Arch for just 18 years. Oh. And uh, I joined because, well, my father told me that I had to join. And of course, he was always right. And I'm <laughs> delighted that I did. Excellent stuff. And uh, we've heard why uh, Elliot and Paul joined. What, what about you, Mike? What was, uh, what was your story? What made you become a, uh, a member of Royal Arch? Well, that's uh, interesting. A bit serendipity, really, because uh, I, I uh, my craft lodge uh, in Yorkshire West Riding, uh, and uh, I live in Lincolnshire. So uh, my pals in Lincolnshire wanted me to join a local centre, and uh, rather than join another uh, lodge, I joined a chapter uh, just to be with my local pals locally. Uh, and uh, rather like Elliot and Paul, I'm very pleased that I did. But it was serendipity, really. Excellent. And Paul, when you first joined, what was your what was your initial thought when you when you went through that that beautiful ceremony? Because uh, I absolutely loved it. I, I was I was blown away, jaw dropped. What was it like for you? Uh, ab absolutely same experience. Um, you know, it, when you join the craft, you're blindfolded, and when you join the Royal Arts, you're the same. And when, when that blindfold is removed, a magnificent sight behold you. And in fact, I'm in many other uh, orders, and I think the Royal Arch is one of the best, if not the best, experience uh, um, in visually, if nothing else, that I've experienced. Oh, that, that's lovely to hear. Well, let's begin now. We're talking about why somebody should become a member of Royal Arch. So we've got people, of course, watching tonight. We're not even Freemasons. We have people watching tonight who may be considering that uh, taking part in that journey. Why should they do that, Elliot? Why, why, why do you think? Do you know, Brody? that is actually one of my favourite questions. So thank you for asking. Um, now, I think if we think about Master Masons, that, you know, a Master Mason knows that they've learned a lot through the three degrees, but they also know that the journey isn't finished. So I would say specifically to Master Masons that if you have enjoyed your three degrees, you're going to love the crescendo of the Royal Arch because really it's inspirational and, and also it's important as well. It's an important culmination of all of the lessons that you learn in the first three degrees. So it's uh, it, it's it's absolutely critical. But I think, as as Paul said, it's pretty breathtaking as well. And have you ever sat with anybody? And I've got a story or two on this, but it, it's not about me tonight, brethren. But have you ever sat with anybody at a festive board and they went, crikey, I wish I'd have done this years ago? Maybe after their exhortation, maybe a few minutes later. Yeah, I mean, I've been to one or two festive boards in my time. That's why I have to keep <laughs> exercising. But um, I, I do have the benefit of sitting by many newly exhorted companions at festive boards, of course. And honestly, they just wish that they would joined the Royal Arch on their own terms. And what I mean by that is that they wish that they hadn't waited like some brethren had told them. And so my advice to any Master Mason here, if you're not sure, just when you're ready, try it for yourself. Just do it on your terms. Try it for yourself when you're ready. Because I have absolutely, Brody. I've seen that, and it breaks my heart when I see someone could have joined 10, 20 years earlier than they actually did. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's quite a common thing, isn't it? And uh, same with you, Mike. Same question. Uh, any Master Masons perhaps watching tonight who are considering joining, uh, and they uh, they're able to do so? Why why should they become? Well, uh, yeah. Well, first of all, I think Master uh, Master Masons should only join when they want to join. Yes. And so that if they have a red form, as Paul said, you know, if they have a red form flushed in front of them, 
uh, we have an expression, you know, in Northern Lincolnshire that we'll deal with that. Um, uh, so you should, a mastermation should join when they want to, not because they ought to join. Or uh, Traditionally, there's been some pressure uh, to join from senior brethren, uh, senior brethren in the lodge, in their lodge, but, but not anymore. I suppose Royal Arch can appeal to master masons, different master masons in different in different ways. Yeah. Uh, what what appeals to me is uh, it takes brotherhood, which is a great place to be, by the way, to an, to another level, which is companionship. Yeah. And uh, and companionship is the next level, I think, from from brotherhood. And um, I can see it in in all the chapters that uh, that, that I visit. Uh, so I would I would say uh, there are a number of reasons. They're all laid out in the um, in the Discover More booklet, uh, but uh, and and each of the e each of the points in the in the Discover booklet will appeal to different people at different times, and we'll I'm sure we'll come back to that, uh, bro. Yeah, of course we will. It'd be remiss of us not to. Paul, uh, you mentioned when you joined um, Royal Arch. Why should others follow suit? I can't better what my two colleagues have already said. I think they've summed it up brilliantly um, in in what they've expressed. There's one thing I'd like to add, though, about why perhaps people haven't joined sooner, and that may be because of um, uh, once upon a time you had to have gone through the chair in your craft lodge before you become, but now that's gone. But still there's that lingering um, myth that's put around that you should wait until you've gone through your craft chair. So that could be a reason. But no, I think my two colleagues have expressed amply the reasons for joining the Royal Arch. Now, here's a question for you. Um, this is a, a great question from Philip Christie, who's been in touch. Thought we'd get to the questions already. And uh, maybe you know the answer. Maybe you don't, because we, we don't prepare you for these things. He says, good evening. Good evening, Philip. Uh, following the pandemic, our numbers in uh, in the Royal Arch, they're recovering in in Great Britain. Uh, so this is Philip. So is it a similar picture to craft? H how does that work, gents? Who wants to take that one on? Well, I can, I can start. Uh, yes, certainly in Lincolnshire, uh, uh, they are recovering and they're recovering uh, strongly, both in the craft uh, and in the Royal Arch. And of course, they have to recover first in the craft because we we get our, our audience is uh, is in the craft uh, and i think that individual chapters and companions it's incumbent on them you know to make the experience of uh, the royal arch so rewarding and so engaging that master as i said a moment ago master masons want to join and and, and that's uh, you know the responsibility of of individual um in individual chapters and funnily enough you know the next person to join uh, a chapter will be invited by somebody, a current member of that chapter, and therefore everybody's involved. Yes, yes. Brilliantly answered, Mike. Uh, Philip, we're going to move on, but uh, hopefully that's giving you the answer you needed. I, I should imagine it's pretty similar uh, across the board. So, Paul, let's talk about uh, what is the Royal Arch membership and communication working party now there'll be a few people watching here this evening who actually don't know what that is and perhaps have never heard of it before how would you describe it to them well it's us three <laughs> plus another three <laughs> uh, and we we we've, we've we're at our third birthday as well actually we were created about three years ago uh, under the auspices of the committee of general purposes we should have had a joint party well, we could have done couldn't year. we yeah we could have done so That's we were set up under the auspices of the cgp um who obviously run all matters to do with the royal arch uh with an initial remit to first of all to have a look at all the different ways the royal arch was described this uh, described across the constitution uh, secondly, uh, as Elliot mentioned, his role in communications to improve the Royal Arts communications across the piece through all sorts of different channels uh, to actually look at the data that was available uh, some three years ago uh, to see to get a state of the nation and also to explore the idea because the membership pathway in the craft was in position uh, by that time, but was there something we should do in the Royal Arch? So that was the initial task that we were asked to do. Okay, then, Paul. So, so that that was the task. 
what what did you discover then? What were some of the issues that that came from that? And and uh, maybe a few toe curling moments. I'm not sure. What did you discover from that? Um, well, I think we discovered a hell of a lot, and we did it via several pieces of work. Um, I've just mentioned the narrative. So we actually looked at all the different publications from across the constitutions, uh, from different provinces and districts that, that described it. Um, we undertook a deep look at the data and discovered all sorts of things, such as across the provinces, particularly in England and Wales, the actual uptake for the Royal Arch varies quite enormously in terms of percentage points, some 24 percentage points. Uh, with the best going over 50 and and, and perhaps down the, the other end of the league, as it were, if there was such a thing, you know, around about the 30 or percent mark. We also discovered that, unfortunately, there were people who joined the Royal Arch. And at the time, and these are about 18 months, two years old data, there were some 19,000 people that were no longer Royal Arch Masons. Uh -huh. um, so they were some of the things we got from the data. We also undertook a two big surveys, one of people who had recently joined, uh, and it was new exaltees. And remember, the pandemic was around, so we actually broadened that to within the last five years. Got a considerable return in numbers. And surprise, surprise, the main reason for joining was because they were asked. Yes. The one-to-one -one personal contact got them to join. Uh, and why did they join? Uh, it was because, in, in essence, they wanted to complete their journey, as it was described. You know, as we've already heard from Mike, it's about things are left hanging as a master mason and you want to find out some of the answers. We also uh, tested with people who weren't in the Royal Arch some of the, some of the data, some of the narratives. And again, that was about completing your journey. Uh, we also had, lastly, access to grand superintendents to reports which go to the rulers annually. Uh, and from that, we found that there was a need to create something called Archway, uh, as well as they were really concerned about the ageing profile. Um, so they were some of the things that we came up with and some of the issues that we've been tackling, which ultimately led us to produce this product called Archway. Absolutely brilliant, Paul. That was summed up beautifully, because that's a really difficult question in itself. So thank you. And I thought this would be a really good uh, question to ask at this point. Uh, from Ian Williams, thank you for chipping in. Remember, brethren and companions, ladies and gentlemen, submit your questions via the question and answer facility on Zoom. Ian says, we often hear, join when you're ready. Join when the time is right. The question I've uh, been asked is, when will I know? When will I know if I'm ready? Elliot, do you want to take that one? Yeah, well, I think I'll uh, hopefully at some point during this session, I can talk a little bit about the narrative that Paul's just described. And I think that really helps to untangle some of the complexities that existed before the narrative launched. So it's a really good question. But if you look into the Discover More booklet, it lays out everything that we know from the research that we've done. And I would say that if anything in there speaks to you, if anything cries out, if you want to discover more, then you should join. And if you're, if you're still not sure or you haven't seen one of the booklets, you can speak to anyone who's in your lodge that's wearing a Royal Arch breast jewel and you can ask them what they love about it and have a conversation. Sage advice, Elliot. Sage advice. Briefly back to you, Paul, before we talk about Archway. So how does this all work then with the work you're doing with Supreme Grand Chapter versus you jelly, if you will? How, how does this all come together? Well, fascinatingly, one of the things when we got towards producing Archway was that there were certain things that we said we had to tackle the narrative. But we also had to tackle something which which we, in fact, Mike came up with the term, that there was a need for the craft and the Royal Arch to be in lockstep. Ah. In other words, craft and Royal Arch working together. Now, uh, we, we started to explore that, um, but quickly realised that we were getting into much higher strategy. Uh, and politically, uh, we, you know, we perhaps didn't have the clout or the remit to do that, but... What was happening at the same time is that we had a new programme master. And, of course, we all know the statement, or many of us know the statement now, which is coming out about one organisation and one journey. So almost unwittingly, when we were thinking behind the scenes, this is what needs to happen as a result of our research, 
the pro came out with this and thus the strategy uh, and uh, the, uh, and the chain the wonderful chain logo that we now have of the blue and the red chain interlinked and working together so yeah that that's uh, that, that's i think is the impact um uh, not us were doing our work behind the scene but being led from the front by saying we need to be one organization between the craft and the royal arch yeah so let's bring you back in mike let's talk about archway so how does archway work in practice because many of us will know about pathway so how, so how does uh, archway work perhaps you could uh, you could explain that to us because we're in very early early stages of this aren't we well, we're very early. I, I want to talk about the, I think you mean the Archway Toolkit. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Be, because we, we define Archway as the three components. One is Lockstep, which has now become one journey, one organisation. Two, the narrative, which has become the Discover More booklet. And three, the Archway Toolkit. And all three w w work together, Brody. So that's that's the first thing I'd like to. Yeah, out. absolutely. Uh, and, and then the to be clear, the Archway Toolkit is for chapters to use. It is not for individual uh, Master Masons or Royal Arts Masons. It's for chapters. Uh, and it's positioned to be coherent between the membership pathway in the craft and Solomon. So it, 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 so we, we continue the, the work that the membership pathway is doing to recruit members into the craft, and we take them into the Royal Arch. And if people want to know more, about the Royal Arch, then we can direct them into Solomon, where they can where they can um, look at their own uh, learning paths. Interestingly, the the, the, the research that we did, uh, there was a big plea within the research to what to do whatever we do, we could gain support provided it was simple. Yeah, well, that's a big one, though, isn't it? There's nothing it worse than to try and, and try and work out how to do something. Yeah, and we, we applied the KISS principle, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, and, uh, and and we're very pleased to report that that's the, the you know, the feedback that we're getting. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, um, uh, it, it, it is simple to use. So let's talk about them, the, uh, the four stones then, because uh, a lot of us are familiar with this already. So uh, Archway, Royal Arch, the four stones in particular. Take us through that, Mike. Okay, so the, the 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 overarching the overarching no pun intended the <laughs> overarching model uh, is a, a catenary arch with four stones: uh, uh, shape, grow, uh, enjoy, and uh, evolve. Oh, evolve. 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 Oh, I was just yes. going to say, Mike, you came up with this stuff yourself. I know, I know, it's a good I know, thing this isn't live, Brody. We can edit. Oh, it, well, this definitely. is just this is the pre recorded <laughs> yeah. version. We'll, know, we'll do know, the edit version afterwards. Thank you, Paul. We did say at the beginning that we wouldn't mind if people chipped in. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Uh, and and what what you have to do is when you access the uh uh the, the model, which is online, you can click on a stone and it will take you uh, three clicks and will take you to the tools that you need to help you shape your chapter. Each stone has its own little mission statement. So, you know, building a shape, for example, is building on the past and looking to the future. And you kick off with a uh, an assessment tool if you want to assess the performance of your chapter. You can actually go into any stone that you want to go into. But if you're not sure, then the assessment tool in shape is the best place to start. Right. The, the, the other thing I'd like to point out is that these tools were already existing good practice in provinces that we found because mm. in our research uh, whilst there were whilst there were gaps and whilst there's a need there were there, were, there were, as, as always there was very very good practice uh, and so uh the material in there has not been dreamt up by me or paul or or, or you know in, in darkened rooms or any of the group it's it has actually come from uh the provinces uh, and uh, we believe there is enough material in there to to turn, you know, an ailing chapter or even a good chapter to, to improve a chapter's prospects uh, and help them uh, become more secure and, 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 and prosperous. Well, I'm not being a company man, Mike, uh, but I, th I think it's very, very good and it's work in progress. There's, all, there's always things that can be uh, developed, but very, very good. Um, how can we find it? How can we find it, Mike? Well, you access it through the Bugle website. 
uh, and uh, uh, if, if you go into Bugle, the, the, you'll see there's a there's a, a band of um, options, and Archway is there, uh, and you can just click on that. You get into there. You see the model in front of you. Uh, oh, by the way, there's also a, 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 effectively a quick start guide in there as well, if you're not quite sure how to use uh, Archway. Uh, and once you're in, it's it's very straightforward. It's you know, it's keep it simple, stupid. It's very straightforward. Well, it's it, you've done, you've done a very good job on that. I have to be honest about it. Let's bring uh, Elliot back in here now. Elliot, tell us about the development of the Discover More narrative. Tell us what what that is, because you touched on this a little bit earlier on, didn't you? Yes, and um, you know, we we heard from Paul before about the research, and we actually didn't really feel that we needed to do any research to. Uh, to understand what was happening as we as we started our journey and actually we did it anyway and what we learned was that across the constitution it was just so incredibly inconsistent and in fact some of the narratives that were out there were, were actually wrong um so we recognized the importance through all of that work of creating a really simple and consistent narrative for the royal arch and we poured through every questionnaire, the questionnaires that Paul spoke about before, every single questionnaire, all of the materials from every province, all of their websites. And, you know, as we heard as well, it, it's that there's some great narratives that were out there. So we just took the best of the best. And, you know, a Royal Arch narrative that we considered to be crystal clear, but importantly, undeniably, that was that was part of the craft narrative but that equally stood up on its own. And, and that's where we where we feel we landed through all of that research. So when it comes to the narrative, would you say that it's it's helped the narrative in Royal Arch already during, during these very early stages? Because the truth is sometimes it was often difficult to explain, wasn't it? Uh, it's the next step uh, and, and all the other bits we've spoken about. It needed something to come along like this. What, what kind of feedback have you had so far, Elliot? Really? Well, it's been really good so far, as you said, of course, Brody. It is early days, but we do feel it's working. And and some examples for everyone here of how the narrative has shown up are probably already familiar to you. So, in the craft, we say discover Freemasonry, and now in the Royal Arch, we say discover more. So it's a simple, clear, and of course, factual statement that, you know, absolutely undeniably demonstrates that this is one organization and one journey. And then the narrative goes on slightly deeper with aspire to discover more about uh, Freemasonry and more about yourself by continuing from initiation to exaltation in the Royal Arch. So, yeah, it's definitely improved the profile of the Royal Arch. It's reinforced the integrated strategy for Freemasonry with its really clear message that the craft and the Royal Arch are absolutely one organisation. It's not finished yet. There's definitely more to do, but we feel like it's a good start. Yeah, and one thing I've got from speaking to all companions is the fact that you're listening. If you've spoken to the provinces, the Met, you're, you're speaking to individual chapters. That's what this is all about. And, and getting all that information together and coming up with this wonderful thing, thing we're talking about. So discover more booklet then. So let me get this clear. Is this aimed at is this aimed at companions already or potential companions? Yeah, well, when we wrote it, it was aimed at potential companions. So we actually aimed it specifically at Master Masons so that we could, and I know I described this a few minutes ago about how if you read it and you connect with it and you feel engaged to it, then you should perhaps ask more questions and see if it's something that you should join. But by doing that, what we learned actually was that it helped this, this Discover More booklet, which is on the Supreme Grand Chapter website, really helped everyone, even the most tenured Royal Archmasons, to sort of knit it all together in a really cohesive and concise way through all of that research that we did over those two and a half years so that everyone can explain it, everyone can understand it, and there's more to come as well. So we're actually going to be furthering this, this narrative in other in other ways. So I uh, won't spoil it, but um, <laughs> we feel good about it, but it's definitely for everyone. Could I chip in there? Yeah. I think, it, I mean, just to build on what Elliot has said, yeah, it is for everybody, because if you go back to what we found out about the ultimate question, well, why did you join? 
and 80% reported, it's because I was asked. What it means is that everybody should have a look at that booklet and understand it sure. so that when they are asking somebody and somebody says to you, well, why? Because then you've got the explanation from the Discover More booklet about what the Royal Arch is about. So we get that commonality of view across the cost of constitution about why you should join and what you will gain from joining. Brilliant stuff. Now, uh, this time... Uh, and, sorry, and I think that's vitally important. Go on then, Mike. Go, go on. I'll, 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 just briefly, because we've got to move on with timing, but go on. I just wanted to say that's vitally important that we, 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 we're we effectively tooling everybody up to describe the Royal Arch in a consistent way. That's vitally important. And we've needed this for years, haven't we? So, uh, no, it's, it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Breath of fresh air to, uh, to hear about this. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Mike, uh, Paul and, uh, and Elliot. Here's a good question that kind of follows on nicely. Uh, and this is from Mel Taylor. Mel, thank you for chipping in. Hope you're having a, a wonderful evening. Uh, Mel says, how can we encourage how can we encourage lapsed Royal Arch Masons? So this is from the research that you've done. Uh, this is from your own personal opinion. Uh, Elliot, you first of all on that? Well, if we look into Archway, again, you can see some, re some really practical tips from a, 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 a chapter can instigate to really look at those lapsed companions maybe not even those that have perhaps left the chapter but those as well but also those that maybe are still members but you haven't seen them for a couple of meetings yeah. and a couple of meetings in the royal arch might turn into a year yes. so what we would say is you know use archway understand some of the tools that exist and use them and every chapter is different. So that's why there's a range of tools within Archway that can help. That's brilliant. And brethren, before, um, companions, before we move on, anybody want to take on that one as well? Or Because it is an interesting question, isn't it? Those who are uh, yeah, kind of not, not just, seeing it anymore. What the, like what the data tells us, um, Brody, is that one of the main reasons for people drifting away from the Royal Arch what was the age profile? As I said, the Grand Superintendents drew that to our attention. So there were lots of people who were finding it difficult to attend. Um, but, but So that's a general point to make. But however, building what Elliot said, that the concept of creating a, a, a care team within a chapter, and that be that one or two or one, a couple of people who can actually make sure they follow up on companions who are starting to drift, or even if you've missed a meeting, to get on the phone and say, I hope you're OK. And OK, you sent your apologies, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I think that whole caring nature is so crucial, given that in the main across the Constitution, chapters meet, meet far less frequently than craft lodges. Brilliant. OK, well, let's move on to talk about Spock's name. Now, uh, this is nothing uh, companions to do with Star Trek, uh, I, I guarantee you, wherever you are, we're not going to go down a sci-fi route. We'll leave that to our, our special interest sci-fi lodge. But let's talk about Spock's, the archway rep in each province. Mike, tell me more. Well, the Spock is the uh, single point of contact in a province. Uh, they have the responsibility for acting as a conduit uh, between the UGLE, the big house, and, and their province. So all communications will go through them. I suspect that they will also be involved in the implementation of archway. Uh I, I would imagine that they would act within their provinces as promoters, coordinators, and perhaps even managers of the implementation process. They have a very important uh, role. Bear in mind that uh, our team, the Archway, the MCWP and the Archway Group, have no executive license to work in individual provinces. It's up to the provinces and then up to individual chapters. But we're here to to help uh, and support them, and we're going to do that through through spots. So, a single point of contact between the provinces and, and as you say, the uh, the Bing House. So, moving forward, then um, a spot sounds like somebody very very important to to pull all this together. Is, it, would, would you agree with that, Mike? Well, as well, certainly. I, I think uh, I, I think we, we've surveyed uh, spots. We're very good at doing surveys in in. Uh, uh, and we surveyed all uh, all the provinces and uh, and all spots, and and we 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 put we've pulled together a program uh, for them, uh, which will include uh, monthly uh, sorry quarterly uh, webinars, quarterly regional uh, uh, Zoom meetings. Uh, we've we're producing a newsletter that will 
uh, which will help them. We will research good practice across the provinces. So we, we will be inviting spokes to send in their progress and what they think's working, what they think's not working, which that we can share across across the constitution. Uh, and uh, and hopefully, uh, I, I, I'm very keen to produce us almost. I don't want to be too uh, wishy washy about this sort of self help network, you know, where people are not dependent on uh, people in the big house. We're we're, we're working together uh, to uh, you know to deal with the challenges and and the successes uh, uh, that we inevitably we will have. I mean, spots are going to be pivotal to the success of Archway. Yeah, I, I, if we I, didn't I, have if we didn't have spots, Brody, it would be completely illogical. <laughs> And that's Sorry. why they're paying the big Sorry. bucks, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but no, it's a great name. And we obviously know where, where it's come from. But please don't ever change that, whatever you do. If you're thinking of going down a different route. Right. We let's be fair. We did, it, Brody. Sorry, we did. We did. Let's Paul, what are you like? What give, are you like, Paul? Sorry, Rinsen? give credit where it's due. We pinched the idea, uh, the name from the, the Members Pathway, because they, oh, have, they have yes, of course. box in the Members Pathway for, for the Members Pathway. Yeah, and actually, that's important that you mentioned that. Um, so let's do a, a round, round the screen now conversation. So um, we've talked about Archway. We've talked about the Scuffer. Uh, we've answered a few questions. We've got to know why you are involved in this. But let's talk about what makes a good chapter. So this is based on the, the research that you've done. This is based on the, the work that you're currently doing, but also from your own opinion, visiting chapters. So what makes a good chapter and we'll begin with you on that one, Paul, if that's OK. For me, it's where people are involved in enjoying what they're doing. Simple as that. Yeah. And uh, and but sometimes we we don't see those things happening. And uh, and that's what this is all about. What about you, Mike? So uh, what makes a good chapter? If anybody's listening now and could do with a bit of advice and, and you know, this is based on your long your long career in Freemasonry, of course. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, Paul's identified the 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 key, the key components there. Uh, to you know, everybody's involved and everybody's enjoying. Uh, uh, but to, to achieve that, then I, I I think that because in chapter we've got an aging profile, but you have to have gone through craft to to get there. Um, what makes a good chapter is a good age profile. Which means that chapters have got to start to focus on younger, younger people, getting younger, younger master masons in. That's not to the detriment of old, you know, the elder, uh, more uh, older people, but we've got to focus on uh, on young people. And then we, you would need sort of a those people in in the chapter need to know where they're going. So you need a good visible, uh, a good ladder, so that people know, uh, you know, where where, where they're going. And and so that knows that each each um, office, uh, it, you know, is covered for the next two or two or, two or three years, and that there's no sort of bum fight or no scratching about, wondering who's going to be sodging her, you know, next year. Um, and and then finally, well, not finally, but uh, just for now, just a chapter that knows its people and is playing to their strengths. Very good. You know, some people really, Very good some people really like to tackle complex uh, ritual, long ritual pieces, and other people don't. So you yeah, know, but other out, people are good at administering and, and managing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I would never be a secretary or a treasurer. Uh, you know, it, it just it's abhorrent to me to to think about being <laughs> a treasurer or a secretary. But but you know, there are things in 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 my chapter. And in the province that I really enjoy doing, and yeah. people play to my strengths, and 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 so they're the they're the sort of pointers I would uh, suggest would support Paul's overarching uh, view of enjoyment and involvement. That's a really good point. Yeah, absolutely. Playing to people's strengths—that's great, Elliot. Um, your, your view on that then? So, what what makes a good chapter? I mean, is mentorship important as well? I mean, what well, it's obviously is, isn't it? It absolutely is. And I think that, uh, you know, we have we say in many of our chapters in Essex that everyone's a mentor and everyone should help everybody else. Everyone has their own unique skills and should be able to share them and support each other. And uh, I think that for, for me, what makes a good chapter is is definitely that, but also just a little bit of planning. I know sometimes it just it can sound boring, you know, oh, we just we need to plan. We need to plan. But 
we it do. does take a little bit of work but it but in my experience it really pays off i've seen some incredible meetings in essex where things like for example a really nice tie-in between meetings and festive boards uh, for example we did a royal arch tracing board lecture and that was followed by a king solomon's feast at the festive board <laughs> which was like brilliant that. We've had, um, obviously going through the proper channels, we've had live video links between chapters internationally and learning about the differences in the Royal Arch. And then we've had a festive board, which is essentially this, the kind of rep a representation of the food that they would be eating in the country that we've just connected with. And there's so many other ideas to really get underneath it. You know, but importantly, just being able to articulate the beauty and the importance of the Royal Arch. Uh, so... Planning, just a little bit of planning can make it such a memorable meeting that people will want to come to. And you've explained a couple of great examples there. So when we talk about Archway, when we talk about Discover, um, how are people? How are your companions in in uh, in Essex dealing with that? What, what you've seen so far? Well, we've seen quite a few things in Essex, and we, we're hearing all sorts of stories. You know, some some are, some chapters, to be completely honest with you, Brody, are still exploring archway they're still yeah. learning about they're still in planning mode uh, but others are in full-blown execution mode and they're just going at it and so we have quarterly provincial wide engagement calls across Essex and and they're really good because that's where chapters can share some of the things that are working for them and then also some chapters can share some of the things that aren't working for them and I think it's really useful but you know a uh, uh, chapter level at a time when we know that we are see we are seeing chapters that are struggling and also we know members are often time poor we've had feedback that the simplicity of archway that mike spoke about just before is exactly what they need because that's where they can go to just get the the simple practical solutions to their challenges and they can then just adjust their plan immediately so we're seeing we're seeing some good work, and I think we're going to see more. I think we're going to see the benefit of Archway for for many months and years to come. It's this is the beginning. Yeah, it's very, it's very exciting, very exciting times, isn't it? And and uh, always evolving, brethren. We haven't got much time left actually, so let's try to squeeze in as many questions as we as we uh, possibly can. So we're talking about what makes a great chapter, and that's a great thing. But let's let's be real, Paul. What makes a bad chapter <laughs> when things aren't going? But it's very simple. It's my words again. It's where people aren't enjoying themselves and they're not involved. And yeah. and dare I say as well that the ritual uh, is clearly not undertaken very well. Um, that would be an added one to that. Because the, the plus side of the ritual is one of the good practices where we see people dividing the ritual up, enhancing the ceremony, bringing it to life. Uh, and the, and the, 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 the opposite is that where it's in a poor chapter where nobody's got a clue what they're doing. Uh, they haven't put the work in and they're not enjoying themselves. Yeah. And, and, and people get dumped on as well. Yeah. And that, and that doesn't make people feel good, which is which is what it's all about, isn't it? The, trying to uh, encourage the opposite of that. Mike, a bad chapter. It's not a nice conversation to have, but let's be realistic. What makes what makes a bad chapter when you've visited in the past and you've gone... Well, just to build on what Paul said, really, I mean, you've got Fred doing his party piece. Month after month after oh, month. Oh well, I've met Fred. Yeah, he does that. Yeah, have you met Fred? Yeah, we've all got Fred. We've all got. We've a all Fred. got a Fred. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we all know one anyway. Uh, and they're doing the party piece uh, every month, and 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 nobody else gets a chance, you know. Uh, and nobody dares say to Fred, "Well, what about letting Fred, uh, Jim have a go?" Uh, you know, young. Let's, let, let's have let young Jim have a go. And then, uh, you know, the ceremony just drags on and on and on as if though nobody's in charge, you know, even not even the DC. There's time wasted because it's not rehearsed. And uh, and, and the problem with that is, I don't put pressure on anybody, but it's self-fulfilling, it's self-prophesizing, isn't it? People are not enjoying it, and therefore they're not putting the time in, and therefore they're not enjoying it, and, and we're in a sort of a, a downward, a, in a downward spiral. And, and and just to build on what Elliot said a, a moment ago, chapters can be just stuck, can't they? They can be, they can they can be stuck in their old ways, and they don't look up and around them, and they seem to expect members to come to them. Yeah, if, if only life was as uh, as yeah, easy. yeah, and, and and then and then I, I look, I, I we got the I guess I guess we got this question from the pro, but and you get this no because. Mm. 
Yeah. Every new idea is, well, no, because. And the main reason is no, because we've always done it this way. No, 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 no. That's not how we do things now. Uh, Mike, sticking with you just uh, just briefly, the future of Archway. So uh, we, we, we've discussed an awful lot in the last 40 minutes or so. It's amazing what you can squeeze into that time. So looking at the future now, what, what can we expect? Well, I think, uh, over, as Elliot described, over months and years to come, we're, we're at the very early stages. But Archway will become the, the go-to reference for chapters who are building their 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 chapter for the future. Uh, it, it, it will grow organically, uh, and it will be developed by... I love, I love this expression. It will be developed by... Uh, members of our tribes and families. It won't be developed by me, Paul and uh, Elliot in a, in a darkened room, uh, you know, uh, with, with, ta with, with towels over our heads. And, and interestingly, the Spock network will become, the, will become a powerhouse of, of, of Archway champions, driving, uh, driving uh, Archway and therefore the Royal Arch, uh, Royal Arch chapters and therefore the Royal Arch forward. That's how I see uh, the Archway uh, developing. All well, exciting times ahead as far as Archway is concerned. Well, I think so, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. One more question. And Elliot, I thought I would uh, would finish with you tonight. So we've got some exciting things to look forward to. That's the message, isn't it, tonight? Uh, everybody is watching. Whether you're in Royal Arch or not, exciting things are happening. This is what we... We all need, but what is the future of Royal Arch when you when you pull all those things together, Elliot? Well, thank you for the uh, toughest question of the <laughs> night. But actually, it's it's really easy because the future's bright, Brody. Um, and but I, I am really excited by the future of the Royal Arch. And you know, Supreme Grand Chapter, we've heard, has invested in all of this work, which we believe is one of the biggest Royal Arch strategies that have happened in many many years. So we've got the overarching UGLE strategy. We've got a clear Royal Arch narrative, and now we've got Archway. So it is exciting. And for the future, um, what, what do I think about the future? Well, my prediction is that more and more members will experience the Royal Arch and they'll fall in love with the Royal Arch so that it continues to thrive for many generations to come. And, you know, the Royal Arch is dear to so many of us, and we all want to share that special Royal Arch experience with everyone. So it is, it is bright. Lots to look forward to. Really good to hear. Companions, our time here is done. Have you enjoyed your Solomon Live experience? Don't all answer at once. <laughs> oh, oh, if you're asking me, yes, I've certainly enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, of course we have. Uh, and we thought <laughs> Elliot was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it Brody, was... um, oh. thank you. Thank you, because this takes a lot of work. And also, happy anniversary as well for oh. these Solomon Lives. Yes. Three years and going strong, companions, ladies and gentlemen and brethren. And uh, and that was me thinking we'd probably make it six months and, and call it quits. It really is an honour to uh, to be part of it. And, and uh, companions, it's been a, an absolute privilege to talk to you this evening. So let's talk about our next Solomon Live, which will be on Tuesday, the 14th of May, where our topic will be building modern Freemasonry. And as you can see from the screen, we'll be discussing the role of the Membership and Communications Working Party. And joining us will be Right Worshipful Brother Stephen Varley, Assistant Grand Master. So that will be Tuesday, the 14th of May, uh, live at uh, UK time, 7.30. So please, please, please sign up for that. And if you haven't done so already, please register for Solomon. You'll find us at solomon.ujelly.org.uk, full of useful and fantastic content your daily advancement in Masonic knowledge. Until then, thank you for joining us. Take care and good night, everybody. <laughs>